Als ich jung war und hatte mein erstes Interesse in Drumming, hatte ich natürlich kein Schlagzeug. Ich musste improvisieren. Ich hatte auf den Möbel gespielt, aber das Beste war, in die Küche zu schleichen und auf die Töpfe und Pfanne spielen. Ich frage mich, wie war es bei den anderen? What, what stimulated you and what did you first hit? Well, what stimulated me was, uh, there was a, a TV program, uh, a variety show, and this gentleman's name was Arthur Godfrey. And uh, I never have found out who the drummer was on that program, but at that time, you know, he would come on to say about half past nine in the morning, and I really hadn't started school yet. Yeah. But I would see this program and see the drummer up there and uh, had some, uh, like, little toy drumsticks. Yeah. And I would just bang on cans and the tables and things like that. And my parents said, well, please, maybe better take him somewhere before he <laughs> destroys the house, you know. So yeah. they took me to a, a, like a music school. And um, my first teacher, is, uh, his name was uh, Abe Hoffman. And uh, he started me on the drum rudiments when I was just about five yeah. years old. You know, double stroke roll. So you began to play in Amsterdam. How old were you? Well, as in, in my childhood, I was five, six, ten years yeah. when I start um, being conscious, uh, conscious yeah. about drumming. Yeah. Then you hit, and I hit on everything. What is hollow? Now, yes. So, so uh, tell garbage, me what, the pots garbage, and pans, yeah, pots and pans, and garbage yeah. cans, and yeah. everything. And it then, seems as though we all start the same way. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I start playing drums and try to imitate the Who drummer, Keith Moon. Oh, with really? With the cymbals right on top. Ah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't satisfy me because I still have that conga sound yeah. in my head. So <coughs> after 23 years, oh, sorry. After 23 years, then somebody told me, try the conga. Mm. And I thought, what is a conga? He said, well, if you hit it and you hit it wrong, then it sounds flat, it sounds no good. Yeah. And that was a challenge for me. Yeah. Did you go in the kitchen and raid your mother's cupboard full of pots and pans like a lot of us seem to have done? No, no, I was more inventive. Ah. Yes. I used to steal knitting needles first. You know. Yeah. Knitting needles. And uh, get old biscuit tins with some heavy sellotape. Yeah. And make a skin on the top. Yeah. And then get some plasticine with some string underneath to make a to snare make the sound. snare? Yeah. Oh, no, I never thought of that. I wish yeah. I'd thought of that. I could have saved myself some money because my biscuit tin yes. had a penny on the top to make the rattle. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah.
What was the first band where you could say, well, you, you went out on the road, the first professional band? It uh, was Ted Fiorito. Ah. Now, Ted Fiorito, uh, he wrote a lot of interesting music. I mean, he wrote I Never Knew, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but it was very interesting because the first date I played with him, I was 17 years old, was in Hollywood, California, at a place called the Hollywood Florentine Gardens. And the main attraction on that bill was the Mills Brothers. Oh. And there I had a chance to really work with some giants. Yeah. See? And yeah. it was there, I was there for three months, and during that time, Benny Goodman's brother, Freddie Goodman, who was Benny's manager, wrote me a note and said, how would you like to come to the Paramount Studios tomorrow and audition for Benny Goodman? <laughs> well, you know, in those days, Benny Goodman was the king of swing. Yeah. And Gene had just left, Gene Krupa had just left, so for a 17-year-old kid to, just to sit in with Benny's band was like, wow, you know. Yeah. And so I went down the next day to the Paramount Studios, and uh, I heard Benny say, where's that kid? Where's that drummer? And I started to shake, you know. I said, oh, gee. And uh, he said, put a, put a uniform on him and go in the makeup department. And my audition was being in the movie, oh, playing, yeah. playing a number right in the movie. That was my audition. <laughs> so evidently, he... he he was really had some confidence in me because after I played that number, he said, okay, uh, the train leaves Friday for New York. I'll see you then. Go it, Thank you. 
when I hear somebody like you playing a groove, it's one of those things that brings a smile on your face and it sounds so perfect that that's really oh, what you. makes a great drummer. Oh, I thank think you. It's well, it's a, it's a thing where uh, if it makes you move, yeah. then it's definitely going to make me move just yeah. to play, play the rhythm itself. Yeah. And, and also the fact that it, you're playing on a, a job like Lionel Richie yeah. and you're playing the ballads and you may think, well, maybe it's not that important, but maybe there are out of maybe 15,000 people who are there to see the show, there could be 2,000 drummers and just think, yeah. uh, is he going to mess up or what? Yeah. You know? so, <laughs> There are always eyes and ears on you. Ja. Yeah. Arbeit in Aufnahmestudio ist entspannt und bequem, aber das Leben unterwegs auf Tournee ist viel mehr anstrengend. Die Hektik beginnt mit dem Aufstehen.
talk. Great. Yeah. You tell the story with it. One, and you've also invented one or two items to produce different sounds from the drum set. And one of the items which you came up with is the jingle oh, yeah. stick. Good idea.
Die Geschichte des Beckens, or Symbols, ist sehr lang. Wir lesen von Symbols in der Bibel. Aber in 1623, ein türkischer Alchemist namens Avedis, hat einen neuen Weg erfunden, Symbols herzustellen. Er war später bekannt als Siljan, das heißt The Symbol Macher. Und wir spielen seinen Symbols auch noch heute. Und jeder hat seinen eigenen Klang. Und jetzt alt und neue Instrumente zusammen. 
Nippy Neuer spielt den Conga Drum. Jerry Brown spielt das elektronische Schlagzeug. Und Brian Orger und ich spielen Percussionsinstrumente. Den Stück heißt Calypso X. <lacht> Wir haben jetzt ein neues Video gemacht, unsere neue Version von einer Hit der 50er Jahren von Cozy Cole, das heißt Topsy.
Das Schlagzeug ist ein ganz altes Instrument, 100 Jahre oder so, mit Tomtoms aus China, Becken aus Türkei und Snare-Trommel und Bass-Trommel aus den europäischen militärischen Kapellen. Am Anfang des 20. Jahrhunderts war Ragtime und Jazz die populäre Musik. Und in dieser Musik, den rhythmischen Gefühl, war mit den Bass-Trommel und Snare-Trommel gespielt. In den 30er Jahren kommt Swing-Musik. Und in dieser Musik war den rhythmischen Gefühl auf dem Hi-Hat-Pedal gespielt. Das war zwei Becken auf einem Fußmaschine. In den 40er Jahren kommt Bebop-Musik, moderner Jazz. Und hier haben wir den Rhythmus auf den Rhythmusbecken. In Rhythm and Blues und Rock and Roll in den 50er und 60er Jahren war den Rhythmus nochmal auf dem Hi-Hat gespielt. Und wir spielen jetzt ein Stück, das heißt Leaps and Bounds, und wir versuchen 80 Jahre Schlagzeuggeschichte in ein paar Minuten zum Spielen. Und hören wir auch ein paar ganz bekannte Themen dabei.
Unsere Welt und unsere Musik ist heute mit elektronischer Technologie ganz anders wie früher. Computers und Synthesizer sind überall, auf die Bühne und auch in die Aufnahmestudio. Hier in die Aufnahmestudio, die ein guter alter Metronom ist ersetzt worden durch ein neues elektronisches Gerät, das heißt The Click Track. The Click Track ist ein Hilfsmittel für das Schlagzeuger, dass er kann ein exakt Tempo halten, ob er will oder nicht. Do you ever have to play with click tracks? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Ah. Oh. I don't enjoy it very much. Yeah. Uh, I think for certain songs, in certain fields, a click track is, uh, is very helpful. There are certain things that shouldn't move. They should be very metronomic. Yeah. Um, and they're generally tempos which are very hard as a human being playing a drum. To keep they're always in the middle you know yeah you either want to play it slower or you want to play it faster and this thing keeps you exactly where it should be yeah uh, but I, I get a little annoyed at bands and players who think that's the way heavy, everything has to be I mean if you take all the movement out of music uh, you're taking all the humanity out of it yeah you know the technology has its place and click tracks have their place but not yeah. all the time are you ever called upon to play in studios with a click track, for example? Oh, yes. Sometimes yeah. I ask for a click track. Oh, yes. It's, uh, it's for me, it's a challenge to swing along with it. Track. Yes. Interesting. Track track yeah. is, uh, so you like work it. with it, uh, yeah. really? Yeah. And at home I have my drum computer. Yeah. So I practice with that as well. Since, I think, the last 10, 12 years, the click track has become very much in vogue and everybody seems to want to play with a click track these days very very unusual to do a record without one in fact yeah. because of the the, the uh, dropping in of parts later so you have to sort of uh, a lot of drummers find it to be a real pain I yeah. mean I think if you can use it to your advantage if it's just there in the back of your head and you can play your part without really noticing it then I think it's good yeah but uh, to, to, to completely play right on the money, uh, right on the sort of click track all the time, I think is very restricting sometimes because I think some fills should speed up, yeah. particularly if you're doing an eight bar fill that really requires a lot of power, starting off quietly and going all the way around the whole kit and ending on a, on a big crash. Sometimes that should speed up a bit. And if you're trying to play to a click, you, you have to it, it almost have to hold it back and it's not a natural situation to, to fill. Do you have to work often with click tracks now? Or? Interesting. Um, this is something which uh, a lot of people that I work with, engineers and producers, they say to me, uh, I'm amazed how you work. Because mm. I don't use a click track, actually. Although I'm playing to tape that's, you know, something that's already Precise, been yeah. recorded. Uh, it's something that I, I, I just suppose, to, to me, to play with a... 
in the, mm. in, in the middle is just totally wrong. Mm. How do you feel about all that? Well, I've always been a very open-minded person, yeah. uh, Pete. Uh, I think I got that from my dad. I'm kind of happy about that because I don't like to criticize anything if I don't know anything about it. Yeah. And it isn't I don't know anything about it. I do know about electronics. I feel that we're in the infancy stage as far as, as electronics are concerned. Uh, for example, you take a Lindrum or, or a Simmons. Uh, mm. There's nothing wrong with those instruments. I think the key word, you wrote me a letter and you said something very important which really puts the hammer right on the nail. And you said the artistic value of those instruments lies in, with the user. Mm. I can abuse that drum set right there, which is an acoustic drum set. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's one of the key words with yes. electronics. If you don't abuse the instruments and use them correctly musically, then they mean something. Yeah. I think what these players have done today, I had the chance to play with these marvelous yeah. players. It's an example of, of yeah. good musicians playing electronic instruments and using them the right way.
you play natural instruments, and I know that you love natural instruments and their sound, and now, of course, with electronics, they're beginning to create an electronic idea of what you know to be the family of natural instruments. <clears throat> Think of this. People, they, they, <clears throat> they told me, wow, this electronic, they, they kill, they, they kills you. I said, well, no, use them. Because it's yeah. a natural instrument, yeah. electronic. Electricity is a natural thing. Now so use that. Yeah, yeah. Use that, just like this. Natural things. Electricity yeah. is a natural thing. Yeah. Use that. Don't, don't refuse it. Yeah. This, Excellent. I think the, the concept of music is the same like a million years ago. Yeah. It's only the sound that, ev that changes every time. And the, the, how, the way how you, the emotion is always the same. Yeah. Because that's why you make music. Während unserer Dreharbeit, es war nicht immer möglich, dass alle Schlagzeuge auf dem gleichen Tag zusammen spielen. Aber mit ein paar äh, Videotricks und Magic und Technologie haben wir diese Gäste zusammengebracht auf demselben Bildschirm.